Hi, I'm Max Robinson. I intend to help physically challenged men become more masculine. In my last video in this playlist, I talked about the archetype of the self, the yin yang symbol, love, like I like to call it. Uh, and in this video, you've seen the title, I'm going to be talking about the four masculine archetypes. So, in my last video, I explained how there's yang and there's yin, and that yang is the masculine force. So, the four masculine archetypes are all part of masculine energy, that yang energy. So if we look at just the yang energy, because as physically challenged men, we want to cultivate more of this energy rather than yin. Okay, so if we're looking at yang, if you take these four archetypes, which I'm going to explain what they are in, uh, in a second, right? Um, if we look at just the yang symbol, that can be an overall view of these four archetypes. So within the yang, there is the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. And the way I like to view things is the lover archetype, which I'm going to explain these things, right? The lover archetype represents the black dot within the yang. The lover archetype is the feminine aspect of or within yang and the three other archetypes relate to the white area of yang so what is an archetype an archetype is an energy pattern it's a blueprint and it's a concept these are all different words and terms but they all describe the same thing right uh, so the four masculine archetypes this is what i think is the best template that I've used to become a better man and I know it doesn't look like I'm much uh, at the moment because what I have a very small YouTube channel where I sit in my room and I talk to a camera right but um, I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen this is what I used to look like on my 18th birthday mr. happy-go-lucky right uh, mr. yeah uh, innocent um, boy because that's what I was, right? And I know that everyone grows with age and everyone changes over time. Uh, but um, I feel like this template has worked for me and transformed me into the man that I am today. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll put a picture up, my my uh, my YouTube uh, profile picture, if you want to call it that. I don't know what it's called. My YouTube profile picture. Um, this was taken, I don't know, uh, two years ago, uh, and um, I'm a man now, and you can tell just by looking at me. Uh, I'm going to get into, in future videos, like I keep saying, more and more about specifics on how to apply these things, but the archetypes relate to the intangibles of being a man. It's not so much applicable this video is going to be about the overall concept and again these concepts of yang energy is a template that i've used to help me and there's so many different definitions online in different online spaces about what a man is and and what it is to be a man and how to be a better man and that um like i'm going to explain these archetypes this is the way so Jordan Peterson, he's um, a quite well, depending on what spaces you look into, right, he's quite well known now. Uh, but I heard a quote of his from four or five years ago, something like that, where he said that every single character could be considered their own archetype, right? Uh, but this for me is far, far too vague, right? It, it, there's not enough clarity there uh, to say that uh, this certain specific character is is is, uh, is a blueprint that you should follow. So if we want a solid template that works, in my opinion, you want to have a something that's less because the less things you have, the more you can focus on the actuality of what it is and how to apply that. So I want to illustrate that these archetypes, 
they're inescapable. You can't escape these archetypes. Um, so Joseph Campbell is quite a famous author and he's written books and spoken in videos about his beliefs and uh, his book, The Power of Myth, is uh, quite famous, right? And uh, he explains that he studied cultures from across the world and throughout history, right? And all of these cultures from different places that could, couldn't have interacted with each other at the time, right? All these indigenous cultures and, and uh, societies that wouldn't have known of each other all held this belief that there's something greater within all of them. And uh, in the past, they used to call it God, right? And um, all cultures, no matter what, have this concept of there is a higher power. There is something bigger than all of us that we can't really grasp. We can't really put our finger on what that thing is. But Joseph Campbell explains in The Power of Myth that across these cultures there are common themes and yes all of them have the belief of there is something greater but it's deeper than that there are more it's more than just there's something greater there's common themes and these common themes are the archetypes because like i said archetypes are energy patterns right uh, i spoke about the yin and the yang that's the well there's love then there's yin and yang separation right and within that there's the archetypes uh if you break it down one step further right there's singularity love duality yin and yang and then there's the four archetypes and if we just focus on the four masculine archetypes there's the king the warrior the magician and the lover and this again it's just names and words put to interpret energy patterns okay concepts blueprints and if you don't like the term the power of myth it also can be called the perennial philosophy that's the exact same thing as the power of myth but some people don't like the language of myth because it's too mystical if you like um more material or if you think in a more materialistic way you can say the perennial philosophy an overall concept that shows that throughout humankind there's something greater within us it's more specific than just yin or yang so when i first heard about the king warrior magician and lover i first heard about it from elliot hulse he's a youtuber that i used to watch 10 15 years ago let's say a long time ago right um and he recommended this book and i've had this book for such a long time now uh, i'm just going to make sure that you can see that on my on my camera yeah yeah okay right so it's backwards because yeah this book here king warrior magician lover um this is like a a brief overview of the archetypes and uh, they focus on carl jung's work carl jung was a psychologist and a philosophist uh and in this book they state that carl jung says that if you don't make yourself aware of these four archetypes they'll manifest in your life unconsciously if you don't become aware of these energy patterns they live in the unconscious right the yin the feminine they live in the in the unknown of your psyche uh if you don't bring light to them right if you don't make yourself aware of them patients suffering delusional episodes often focus their paranoia on an external tormentor usually one conforming to Jungian archetypes in this case a scarecrow so like i said the archetypes are inescapable so what more reason do you need to learn about this kind of thing right so in the description i'm going to put a bunch of links to um different people describing the archetypes in different ways Four quadrants of our kingdom. don't get caught up with terms even king warrior magician and lover they're just terms to describe these energy patterns right so like i said check out my description for a bunch of different resources on on this subject
after I looked into this book, King Warrior Magician Lover, I continued to watch Elliot Hulse for a, a while, and um, ten years ago, uh, Elliot Hulse made a video with his mentor at the time, Paul Check, and um, they had eventually it turns out they had different belief systems so they grew apart but Paul Check is um I value his opinion very highly I would say he's a good king a good person to listen to so if I just summarize what these words interpret I'm going to break down each of these concepts individually in their own separate videos. For now, I'll just say a few words on each of these things, just to give a brief overview of what they are, right? So, first of all, we have King Energy, and Elliot Hulse resonates with this energy the most. Um, I believe he has a program called King, right? Um, but the King Energy is about creating order in your life. The warrior energy is about physicality and becoming strong, right? Um, the magician is about thinking and uh, using your intellect. And the lover is about feeling and using your heart. So, again, our goal is to become more masculine, right? And I said about why we want to achieve that in my previous video in this playlist, okay? So we want to become more masculine so in order to become our best selves and reach our full potential we want to use these energy patterns make ourselves aware of these energy patterns and become a good king a good warrior a good magician and a good lover all at the same time right because that is the ideal man. That is a worthy goal to strive towards. Um, it can also be interpreted that you go through these stages of king, warrior, magician, and lover in cycles throughout your life as well. But um, like I said, the main overall goal to, to strive for is to have all of these energy patterns within yourself online or active or conscious in your mind at all times so you can ask yourself the question of am i being a good king warrior magician lover and one of my favorite books uh that goes quite deep more deep than the the king warrior magician lover book is this book here no, wrong way this way right uh awakening the master masculine by yao i don't know how to pronounce his um his uh, middle name, Namake Morris. Uh, he goes by Master Yao, right? He has a YouTube channel. Um, and uh, this book is so much more in depth than, than The King, Warrior, Magician and Lover. The terms that he uses is the house of the man. That's, if we look at the Yang energy, he calls, he breaks down the Yang energy as the house of the man. And he talks about the archetypes. He calls them the hunter the warrior, the eagle, and what's the last one he uses? The healer, right? So it doesn't matter what terms you put to these things, or it doesn't matter if you don't believe in them or not. These things are inescapable. And um, again, like I said before, all the more reason to learn about it. Like different types of people like different things, right? So, um, I've also read this book, uh, Jack Donovan. Gotta get used to putting it the right way. Right, The Way of Men by Jack Donovan. And in this, he talks about, if I can just get out the. Okay, so Jack Donovan talks about honor, courage, mastery, and strength. And all of these relate to the archetypes too. Okay, he says that strength, courage, mastery, and honor, these are the things that help you become a better man. These are the, the, the traits, if you will, that, that, um, that build a strong man. And all of these traits can be related to the archetypes, 
you know like it doesn't matter what words you put to these things uh, it's an underlying theme within the human psyche Rudolf Steiner is another philosopher Paul Cech talks about Rudolf Steiner a lot and uh, Steiner uses the terms being thinking feeling and willing Steiner said that if you take Jesus as the example of the perfect man or the divine man Steiner said that Jesus uh, has three beings within him so Jesus is king energy in this analogy right Jesus is king energy and he has the beings of thinking feeling and willing within him so that's Jesus being the king archetype and then also having the lover the magician and the warrior within him so to become the divine man that's just another example of uh, phrases you can use to, to, to explain what I'm explaining. If I was to use my terms, I would say, instead of the king, I would say the leader. And I'm going to get into more detail about these phrases in the next video. Okay, So I would use, instead of the king, I would use the leader. Instead of the warrior, I would use the champion. Instead of the magician, I would use the strategist. And instead of the lover, I would use the artist. So another point to emphasize these archetypes. Uh, you see in, in movies and uh, in documentaries, let's say, uh, people in past times, like the Romans, they had the gods, right? And the Greeks had the Greek gods. Again, th this is just humans trying to put words to describe something that they can't fully grasp right and the archetypes are the things that they're trying to understand i believe for the, the roman gods and the greek gods and mythological characters are just interpretations of these archetypes of these energy patterns and equally i would say that characters are also personifications of the archetypes characters are like the the idealized versions of what we can strive to be they're conduits for the energy right so the energy patterns are, are these concepts are these archetypes right and if we look at gods or characters or men in the world that you aspire to be like even right they embody this energy more so than an average man I am above average. Sam Ovens made a video uh, saying that, again, even if it's unconscious for you, you see yourself as the main character in your favourite TV show. So if you watch your favourite TV show or movie, uh, everyone has different characters that they relate to, right? And the reason why these characters are so relatable is because the characters relate to the archetypes, right? And we relate to the characters because the characters are clear representations of certain energy patterns that we find endearing or enticing. Uh, so this can give you good insight into yourself, right? If you ask yourself, who is my favorite character and what does that say about you? right so for me my favorite character is spartacus from the tv show spartacus which came out 10 15 years ago right spartacus is like the ultimate warrior energy in my opinion uh but also he has traits of being a good king and a good lover and a good magician also definitely but when you're a physically challenged man you have to constantly go through adversity right and Spartacus is that man that is always pushing and striving and going through adverse situations and winning despite the odds. And uh, for me, that's relatable. So ask yourself, who's my favorite character? What does that say about me? And another thing to, to think about is if you resonate more so with an evil character 
ask yourself, what does that say about you? I'm not saying that you're evil. No one is truly evil. I don't believe that, right? But um, it shows you that it gives you perspective on where you're at in life. An example from my life is um, when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, a video game that I played three, four years ago, let's say, before Kingdom Hearts came out, I played the entire series, right? I uh, Before I was into reading all kinds of different books, right? Before I started really being properly aligned with who I want to become, before I started just reading books and meditating and all of these practices that I'm going to talk about more in, in later videos, I used to play a lot of video games, wasting my time, to be honest. And uh, I'll, again, I'll get to talk about that in later games. Later videos too um so i used to play video games non-stop because i didn't um i wasn't any wiser right it's like oh i have all the time in the world i can't work because of my pain i'm just gonna play video games so i played the entire kingdom heart series back to back to back so i got the whole story right and uh when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, I wanted the main bad guy to win. And uh, the main bad guy in Kingdom Hearts is Xehanort. And he is literally the personification of darkness. He is darkness. And uh, again, it just goes to show where I was at in my life. And because I wanted Xehanort to win. As, as weird as that sounds, right? I was like, oh, fuck Sora. Sora's a little bitch, right? Oh, friendship. The power of friendship. Like, nah, man, that's some pussy shit. You know, that's how I was thinking. So I want that that king energy, that that um, tyrant energy. Xehanort is the unconscious king. Xehanort is... He's darkness, he's evil unconscious feminine yin he's the the polar opposite of a good king which is a tyrant xehanort is a tyrant and that's where i was also in my life i was a tyrant to myself because i was smoking a lot of weed drinking a lot of coffee watching a lot of porn playing a lot of video games watching a lot of football pointless stuff I was, it's self-sabotage, really, you know, that's what I was doing to myself, and um, I was, uh, I wasn't in a good place, and the character and my relation to the character, when I look back now that I know about these concepts, I have the insight to say, okay, this relates to why I was being like this. I liked this character because I shared traits within myself that were unconscious that this character had because this character relates to the energy patterns, the archetypes, right? I hope that you're following with these, these uh, explanations that I'm giving you. So another good question to ask yourself is what does the media that you're consuming, what's the message of it? What is it implying? What is this media telling you what story is the media telling you because really and truly to in order to understand things the one of the best ways is stories stories are all there really is at the end of the day your life as a man or well my channel was for the men right physically challenged men that's my audience that i intend to help um and as a man, you have the ability to create your own story. The stories, the common narrative uh, that the, the, the media portray, you know, it, it's a, it's a well-known saying that bad news sells, right? Bad headlines get much, much, much more attention than good headlines. And whether you watch, if you watch the news or listen to the radio, and you're not consciously choosing what station you're listening to, 90% of it is probably negative. And also, 90% of it, 
you don't need to know about. Like, I'm, um, I might be seen as being like crazy or weird, right? You're crazy. I'm not. No, I'm not. But I don't watch the news. I, I don't, uh, I don't watch football. I don't play video games. I used to be that guy. This, this is what I'm saying. I used to be just the average man that has no agency in his life and has no direction in his life and just goes with the flow, right? Um, but if you choose to be like that, there's always a choice. Then you won't be fulfilled, right? If you choose to learn about things that you're interested in, you don't specifically have to learn about the archetypes if they don't interest you, right? But if you learn about subjects and topics that you're interested in, you start to become more fulfilled, especially if you apply what you're learning. Then you really come into your own. And you're like, okay, I know who I am now. This is, I'm in a good place and I can help people. So like I said, in my next few videos in this playlist, there's going to be four of them, of course, in my next four videos in the playlist, I'm going to be breaking down each archetype individually and explaining more about what, the energy pattern represents. So if you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe. And always remember, life is good, but it can be better.